Hey YouTube, Azraz here, and welcome to my second part of my interpretation of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen's prehistory and lore. Now today we're going to talk about the Dark Mirror, the Archai race. We're going to shed some light on the most corrupted and vile creatures known as the Revenant. Uh, no, not that Revenant. Yeah, that Revenant. And why they're so messed up. We're also going to talk about the arrival of the humans and how they almost faced extinction. Now, we're going to start off with a place and time called the Age of Seclusion. It's between the year 0IH and 469IH. Now, between those years, the dwarves are recovering from a catastrophic attack from the god Razik, which I discussed in my last video. And out of that event sprung the Zealots of Ra, a cult dedicated to the imprisoned Razik. The elves settled on Ferrothal and planted their loosened tree and bonded it with magic, creating their first three seals of what would eventually become the mysterious Seven Locked Door. The War Tree War erupts between the Ogres and the War Tree Race, a native race to Terminus. Since the absence of their mad king Rothok, a lack of leadership causes them to lose the Third and Fourth War. Now the second era of collision happens with the arrival of the Jinto Race. They arrive in 450 IH. Their pantheon gods, Itero, the husband king, and Janavi, the bride queen, are known as the Infinite Union. Now, Itero succumbs to a sickness of vast power known as the Eyeless Eclipse. It was so powerful that not even the gods themselves can cure it. Now, we're not talking about some swine flu shit. We're talking about some fucked up celestial disease. Now, Janavi loved Itero so much that she descended his body to a higher mortal, uh, hoping that he recovers. She was dead wrong. Not only did it get worse, but in time it transformed him into a twisted half-god filled with violence and hate and darkness. And it becomes a madness that starts to affect the Jinto race, and it turns them into a warlike cult. Janavi sees the corruption of her people and is heartbroken. When she confronts Itero, he freaks out, and he begs her to join him. I guess he wanted to recapture their holy union back when they were celestials. Now, like most villains, the moron reveals his plans to consume the realm and reveals himself as the ravaging lord, leader of the revenant. Now Janavi's like, what the fuck did I help create? You know, and she resolves in a desperate plan to try and save the realm. So what does she do? She descends and imbues her life essence to the remaining untented gentle race, protecting them from a corruption and darkness, turning them into a new race called the remnant. A race of zealous warriors, they have these crazy abilities and an appetite of exterminating the Revenant. They fight as one mind, no matter the rank. Now, legend has it that when Janavi sacrificed herself to the Remnant, a flicker of Janavi's light imbued into the chest of the Ravaging Lord. With his defenses lowered among his disbelief of his beloved being gone, he suffered from a physical and emotional injury. Now it's at this point where the Revenant attacked the Remnant, starting the first part of what is known as the Deicide War that affects the whole realm. With the Ravaging Lord unable to recover from his wounds, he was unable to lead his army, and was forced to retreat under Mount Hilthor, east of Rainfall. Now, the second area of collision happens with the arrival of the Mir of Isil and the Archai of Roa, arriving roughly about the same time in 458 IH. Now, the Mir come from a planet called Isil, a planet where it's mostly water, but uh, there was land on there, and there was a huge war between these ancient leviathans. The battle was so brutal and violent that the kingdom on lands were destroyed. A humble goddess by the name of Serenai was given the gift of creation by the spirits of Isil, and she created the Mir race. It was basically to drive off the leviathans and send them back to the abyss, which they did. With the Leviathan's god, the gods came together and blessed over the Mir race. It was definitely their glory days. When the Mir arrived on Terminus, the waters acted like a poison to them. They couldn't breathe. And in an attempt to save the race, the god Nyathir, god of battle, descends and sacrifices himself, turning his body into a breathable sphere, composed of Isil's native waters, so that the Mir can survive. But a short time later, the water of Terminus quickly breaks through the sphere corrupting the safe waters. Nyathir's devoted followers would not move a fin or flinch a muscle. If they drown, they're gonna drown in their god-sacrificed sphere. Saranite, watching her people die, quickly descends, sacrificing her immortality to create a new mirror, 
altering their bodies, giving them lungs and legs. And her sacrifice saved them. Now, the Nytherian Red were fucking pissed, believing that their god had dishonored them by violating their bodies as mere and warriors. And what do they do? They fucking kill her and then fuck off in the oceans. Now, with both their deities gone, the Mir were renamed Dark Mir. In the end, the Dark Mir are seeking to claim their glory days of Isil. They built a glorious city in honoring Serenai, and they called it Serenai's Rest. Now, the Archai come from a crystalline planet called Roa. Much like the gnomes, they were originally created from another race of pure magical energy called the Aeoan. Now, the Eowyn were deconstructed and reconstructed by the followers of Roa's dark celestial lord, and were bred as a race of slaves. They were renamed the Archai. Now, this desecration gave the Archai race the ability to graft an elemental nature from the region of Roa, meaning their weaker arcane core can acclimate to fire, wind, water, and a material that a young Archai was infused with. These striations, markings, or textures are the very manifestation of their acclimated arcane core, which a young Archai go through called the Ceremony of True Birth. Now, the Archai have two deities we know of, uh, the Dark Celestial Lord and Hathis Crevegel, which I will talk about uh, during the Deicide War. Although the Archai started as slaves, their whole culture is based on valor, uprising, and celebration. They declared war on their captors and whooped some serious ass and won their freedom. When arriving on Terminus, they settled on an island of Roroa, which means little home. They are said to entice in danger like a sport. Yeah, that race sounds like a badass. The second era of collision ends with the arrival of the humans in 459 IH. Now, the humans arrive on the continent of King's Reach. Their first encounter with its harsh winter was named the Cursed Winter, and only with the help of the nearby elves of Ferdal that the young colony survived. Their human king, Amonsal, rallied his people and founded the town Havensong, a crown jewel of dedicated effort. Now, Amonsal and his queen gave birth to the future king, Avendir. 25 years after Avendir's birth, the human race faces danger and extinction. Uh, seven years into what is known as the Deicide War emerges. Now, there's the god Asari gets involved. I'm telling you guys, this whole fucking war is a mess, and I'll tell you about it in a separate video. But Avendir takes over his father's throne during this war and gains a reputation of being a strong leader in battle. He and his people founded Thornfast, a coastal seat of power, a capital city that had no equal in wealth and influence. Even after 450 years later, the humans are still prospering through the heritage and sacrifice of King Amensal and his son Avendir. Alright guys, well the chapter ends over here. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Uh, if you did like the video, please press like or share. Uh, I'd appreciate it. And my name's Azraz and I'll see you guys on the flip side.